If you've been designing yourself a garden room, you may have come across a problem when you get to the doing the flat roof. So let's take, for example, a garden room of four meters wide by six meters long. And what you wanted to do is span your roof joists this way. Now, if we look at the roof joists in section, we'll find that we've only got a limited amount of room here for this joist. And generally, um, if you look at online tutorials from people who are doing garden rooms, they'll say this is roughly one, two, five millimeters or thereabouts, um, a five inch, five inch roof joist. So if you've got a four meter span, um, if you want to download my timber calculations tables here, I've got a really easy ready reckoner for flat roof suggested timber sizes. Um, so here for a C16 timber, 450 joist centers and with a, a typical uh, fairly heavy timber roof. For a four meter span, you're looking at 47 by 195 um, as a finished timber size. So this is way bigger than this 125 zone that you're looking for. So what do you do? Well, what you need to do is to have timbers uh, of 47 by 195 at 450 centers. That seems to be the only solution. Now, the other solution and the better solution, I think, that you should think about is a flitch beam. A flitch beam, first of all, let's just have a look where we'll put it. This is a beam that can take far more load. And so what we can do is we can divide the roof up. So if we put the beam in here, and then we span our timber joists this way and this way, what we've done is we've cut down the roof span now to three meters. And the way to visualize this is that this beam now is a support. So it's just the same as if we were to support the beam on this wall and that wall, or that wall and that wall. What we're doing now is we're supporting our roof joists on this wall and that support. So just to clarify, this is where your wall studs are. timber studs and so on. So that's the wall of your garden office or garden room. So now we have a three meter span. And now if you look at these tables, uh, I'll put the download link in the description below. We've now got three meters and we could cut down our roof joists to 47 by 195. So we've now this depth here is now 145 millimeters, which is much better. The next thing we could do instead, if we want to cut down the span of our joists even further, we could put one flitch beam here and one here. And then we would have six divided by three is two meters. So we'd have a two meter joist span spanning this way. Sorry, flat roof rafter span going this way. So now we've got three spans of two meters. And if we look at our tables now for a two meter span, we can have potentially 47 by 97s or 47 by 120. So now we're getting towards this figure here and we can, we can do that. So what's a flitch beam and is it gonna be expensive and difficult to design? Well, a flitch beam is simply a piece of steel flat sandwiched between two or more timber joists. So if we take a section through this beam here, so we're cutting through here, and that's the view in that direction, view in that direction of that section. That's what this is. So I'll just 
color that in black. This is a section of a flitch beam. So we are, so we have a flat plate and we have timber packing it each side. Now the flat plate spans from here to here and the timbers span from here to here and they're supported at each end. So it is a beam. And this kind of arrangement, a flitch plate, so I'll just write that in, flitch. This kind of arrangement is much stronger and resists deflection much better than if you were to just put two or three timbers next to each other. So a typical arrangement might be a one twenty by forty seven one side a one twenty by ten plate and another one twenty by forty seven timber and then what we do is we put bolts through so now if we look at the view here in this direction what we're getting is so if we show along the elevation of the beam there's the roof covering there's the plasterboard underneath and our bolts go in this kind of arrangement so they're staggered top and bottom and you can actually get away with some quite reasonable size bolts M8 or M10 I'd probably stick with sort of the the larger one just in case what I would also do is put some oversized washers in there so that we don't crush the the timber here and here so can you see how cheap and easy this is a order a piece of steel flat from the steel merchant invest in something like a serious drill to drill the holes and then in um, all you've got is a couple of your timber rafters that you sandwich each size and some bolts so it's not a lot of money it's very low technology and easy to do um, I'll, in another video I'll show you the calculation you need to do and again this is very easy to undertake what I'll do is I'll put a link for a pillar drill that I recommend in the description below because basically if you've just got a hand drill you're not going to be able to drill these 10 or 12 millimeter holes very easily into the steel so if you factor in your pillar drill you're looking about 70 pounds for a pillar drill for the steel for the steel you're looking at about say a hundred pounds for the steel and then for the timber well you've got those anyway so let's let's say 50 pounds for the timber so considering the redu reduction in size now to 120 by 47 whereas previously you would have needed to go bar to, with a 195 deep timber it's quite a saving in fact the saving in timber probably accounts for this figure here which is not really very large 220 quid plus the bolts for your flitch beam so hopefully that gives you an idea for a way to do a flat roof for a garden building where you've got maybe a three metre span or more. Leave me comments below uh, if you've got any questions and don't forget to download your free timber calculations, the easy way uh, cheat sheet for some suggested uh, span um, tables and sizes. Um, in there you've got other data for being able to calculate 
flat roof, rafters and other timber beams as well.